Grace to you and peace, and welcome to this uh, online worship service offered by First Lutheran Church of Albemarle. Uh, we're glad that you're able to watch, it, watch this service today, and uh, we do pray that it is a blessing uh, to you. Uh, as always, we do have an order of worship available to you in the comments section of this uh, video. Uh, you can uh, use that, or you can just watch the service, and that'll be, that'll be just fine. Uh, this is a very special uh, Sunday for us in which we are recognizing uh, and honoring our high school and college graduates. Uh, we'll have five of our graduates uh, sharing special messages during the sermon time uh, in just a little bit. But at uh, this time, I invite you just to uh, take a breath and, and have a prayer uh, with our prelude as we prepare ourselves uh, for worship. you now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship with our order for confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy, we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, kids, it's that time for children's message, so come on over to your screens and let's uh, talk a little bit today. And I'm excited today. I have a very special guest uh, for you. It's going to be a surprise, so let's see if um, we can find out who this is. Ready? Da da! It's Miss Kim. Hey, Miss Kim. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm excited. How are all of you? I can't wait to see you back in church very, very soon. And we can't wait for that either. But in the meantime, we get to do this, and I thought everybody was probably missing you a whole bunch. So. Well, I'm missing them a whole bunch. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. But so, okay. Miss Kim. Tell me something good. Oh, well, there are lots of good things going on. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember that with all that 
that's been going on, but there's a lot of good. Um, we've had some extra time to spend at my house as a family with Michael and Mason doing some more things that we don't normally get to do. We've gone hiking and we've done some yard work and we've done all kinds of things together, made some new recipes and it's been good. It's also really good to be back into the church building, even if it's for just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Well, and all of our kids have probably had some good things happening too, and some family time and some different things. It's been a different kind of experience for everybody, and we're all just doing, doing the best we can. But you know, what we know is God is with us through all he this. He is with us. And I have, been, have enjoyed so much seeing all of those faces on Facebook. Mm. I keep up with what's going on with those kids, whether I get to see them or not. But I'll tell you, I'm really glad to see all the smiles and all the good things that they're doing for people in our community right now. God would be smiling at you. Yes, very much so. And we're smiling at you. We're glad to have you back with us. Yeah, and thank you very much. We're excited to have you sing today, too. So tune in. She's going to be singing a little bit later in our worship service. Thank you. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For friends like Miss Kim for friends like Pastor James. <laughs> and bless us. And bless us. As we continue. As we continue. To share kindness. To share kindness. And love. And love. With everyone. With everyone. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I mean, well, thank Thanks you, Miss Kim. Oh, we're glad to have you. Now we continue with our readings, and we have another special guest for our readings from Scripture. Good morning. The first reading is from the 18th chapter of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed to, down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah will have, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have this pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to, his gra to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, 
knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel reading today is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning in the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, I'm very excited today uh, to turn over my pulpit to some of our high school seniors who are graduating this year. Uh, this has been a very challenging uh, year for them, as it has for all of us. Uh, and we as a church wanted to find a way to recognize and, and honor them uh, through, uh, through some kind of uh, worship service. And so we're really excited today. We had five of our seniors able to come and, and join us and share a message from this very pulpit. Uh, those uh, have been recorded. And so looking forward to uh, having those be shared uh, with all of you. Uh, they are from uh, Emily Almond, uh, Cameron Helms, Caroline Manus, Gavin Oliveri, and Eli Williams. Uh, in the uh, order of worship today, you'll see their names along with the other uh, high school and college graduates uh, that we are recognizing uh, this year. But we are so honored to have them share these really powerful messages uh, of hope at this time. Good morning. My name is Emily Allman, and I will be graduating from North Stanley High School. In the fall, I plan to attend the University of Florida in Gainesville, majoring in marketing and management. My favorite verse when I was reading the um, uh, suggestions for this thing was, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. To me, going so far away to school, that was a big help to always know that the Lord would be with me wherever I go. And not to be afraid of what's to come, but to know that He will always be there for me and that this is His plan. My path at church started when I was an infant. I always remember being baptized here, growing up here, going to the Wednesday programs with Miss Kim, middle school outings, youth mission trips during the hot summers, Last year's mission trip was definitely the most luxurious, staying in those dorms with air conditioning. Um, and so many friendships and bonds that were built and that will last a lifetime. My favorite memory would be one Sunday, it was youth, and I was probably in 7th or 8th grade, and Pastor John and Miss Kim surprised us and took us to play mini golf, and we ate ice cream, and it was such a surprise, and we got to know each other better than we thought we already did. I'll always be thankful for the congregation, Pastor John, Pastor James, Michelle, and most definitely Miss Kim for always being there for me throughout the years and always wanting the best for me. Also, my parents and family for believing in all of my dreams and helping to make them come true. Thank you for everything you have done for me and continue to do for me. everyone. My name is Cameron Helms and I attend Levine Middle College High School where I will be graduating with not only my high school diploma but my associate in arts degree as well. I am proud to be a fourth generation member of First Lutheran Church. The Bible verse that I chose for my lesson today is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 which reads, we are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. 
I chose this specific verse because I think it perfectly captures my high school experience, especially my extremely unconventional senior year. This verse has been so impactful to me throughout my life because it reminds me that even when things don't go as planned, God reminds us to persevere and lean into the plan he has set for us because he will never forsake us. This past year has definitely been an example of things not going as planned. Classes that could only happen in person, like painting, were switched to online. College tours went south when each campus I visited abruptly closed and students were forced to move out. Like everyone else here, our high school graduation ceremonies have been replaced by drive through diploma pickups. I'm sure you've experienced your own trials over the past few months, but I find comfort in the message from Corinthians that reminds me of God's everlasting love and guidance. Like all of you, I am also saddened to see my country at this time. We are indeed afflicted. I am perplexed, but I feel peace in knowing that God sees our turmoil, and though we may be perplexed or even struck down, God will not let us be crushed, forsaken, or destroyed, because he is always with us. And though we may struggle now, we will be able to come together again and work to rebuild our community. In the meantime, let's gather around the people who love us and remind one another that everything is going to be okay. That love and guidance started for me right in this church, whether it be from having meaningful discussions at youth group on Sunday nights, or the amazing bonds made with both new and old friends at the summer mission trip, or even seeing the smiling faces of the people who I am privileged enough to call my second family here every Sunday morning. All of these things, all of these are things I am saddened to have missed out on my senior year of high school. However, I do have some incredibly fond and funny memories of First Lutheran to keep me company while away at college. One memory I will never forget was on my first mission trip in Rushville, Indiana. After a strenuous week of work, we waited for hours in the heart of downtown Cincinnati for the church bus to take us home. I'm sure you all know what happened next. The bus, of course, broke down in front of the hotel, and we all feared the worst, that the battery had died and that we were going to be stranded in Cincinnati indefinitely. Talk about being driven to despair, I mean. It took Kim, John Bowers, a couple of friendly pedestrians, and a traffic director to be able to move the bus out of the middle of the intersection and finally get it to somewhere to be jumped again. It was one of the most stressful times on a mission trip, but definitely one of the funniest looking back, although I'm not sure Miss Kim would agree with me on that. Now I would like to take a moment to thank all the members of First Lutheran who have helped me get to where I am today. First off, I'd like to thank Pastor James for being an incredible pastor and friend. The first mission trip I spent with Pastor James was my first time really being able to get to know him. His never-ending good attitude could turn any stressful situation into a happy one, and his constant humor kept all of us going, even when we were exhausted from the work week. He is always a bright and smiley face to see on Sunday mornings, and I will sure to miss his constant joke telling. Next, I'd like to take a moment to thank Ms. Kim for being such a positive influence on me throughout all of my years in youth group. I remember the first Sunday school class Ms. Kim ever taught. I ended up going and walking away thinking, wow, that's how they should all be done from now on. If that doesn't describe Ms. Kim, I don't know what does. Ms. Kim brought light, joy, and laughter into every aspect of youth. She gave it her all and worked so incredibly hard to make sure every single person felt seen, heard, and had fun, all while making us feel so loved at the same time. I am so grateful to have Ms. Kim as, act as my second mom, and I will miss her greatly while away at college. I'd also like to thank Pastor John. PJ holds a very special place in my heart as he not only baptized me, but also confirmed me in the church. PJ was my first introduction to the church and helped me understand God and develop my faith for which I am forever thankful for. His approachability, kind heart, and sweet personality are all defining characteristics that made him such an amazing friend, shoulder to cry on, and pastor. Finally, I'd like to thank my family because if it wasn't for them, I know I could not have gotten to where I am today. I'd like to thank my mom for being my best friend, constant source of support, and always pushing me to do my best in everything I do. She constantly believes in me and always encourages me to persevere in situations where I might be tempted to give up. I love you so much and could have not have done this without you. I'd like to thank my dad for never giving up on me and always fighting for me. He has always motivated me to continue to be successful and be the best version of myself that I can be. I am forever grateful for the both of you. I would also like to thank my sister Allison for being one of my best friends and for always continuing to be able to make me laugh. I will definitely miss cracking jokes with you every day and laughing until our sides hurt. I would also like to thank my grandparents, Bob and Sarah Morris, Fee and Craven Morton, as well as my Aunt Wendy Holbrook for their constant support. I would not be who I am today if it weren't for you all. 
Lastly, I would like to thank all of you, my church family, for showing me what it means to be a Christian and giving me faith in the future. As for my plans in the fall, I will be attending Appalachian State University, where I will be double majoring in international and comparative politics as well as economics on a pre-law track. Thank you everyone for helping me get to where I am today. Good morning, my name is Caroline Maynus and I am now a graduate from West Montgomery High School. I will be attending the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in the fall of 2020. I am majoring in nursing and hope to also minor in Spanish. While in high school, I was able to go on many trips and serve in office for my beta club, work in the community of Montgomery County and work on my faith through First Lutheran. I know for us seniors, our high school career ended faster than we thought it would. At the end of the day, a chapter of ours closed. Outside of our small counties, the world is changing so quickly, and no matter if it, is, if it is the coronavirus, climate change, social injustices, or even just new responsibilities, I know for me, it's scary having to walk out and not be in my safe little hometown's bubble. In these unprecedented times we are living in, I believe all of us have tended to lean towards God and have a little bit more faith and lean towards scripture a little bit more than usual. I know for me, my favorite scripture is from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly, love to clothe yourself with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and all of these virtues put on love, which binds all of them together in perfect unity. We find ourselves living in a world of conflict and fear, but at the end, standing for one another and trying to find ways to compromise and be at peace is a goal we should all have. Growing up in First Lutheran, I was shy and would grow up with Sunday school, Wednesday programs, youth, and going on mission trips. Mission trips were a part of my high school career that really helped me blossom. Traveling, meeting new, other, meeting new people, and finding myself grow, grow closer to Christ and even growing closer to the youth. As the years have gone by, I look back and see everyone who has impacted me in the church and still support me beyond the walls. Pastor John, Miss Ann, Mimi, Miss Kim, and now Pastor James, thank you, First Lutheran Congregation, for all being a home. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Gavin Oliveri and I appreciate all my church family for making efforts to still recognize all the graduates with this tradition, especially in these unusual times. I'm currently a senior at Alcorn High School with plans to attend the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill this fall to major in sports and exercise science. My journey here at First Lutheran covers a span of 13 years. My best friend in kindergarten was Eli Williams. I was not an active youth member at any church at the time, so Eli decided to invite me to Wednesday youth programs. I'm so thankful that, is, that I decided to come. I attended every Wednesday, which made my parents start coming to First Lutheran on Sundays to hear a singer or perform in the Christmas bed. Within a matter of months, our family joined the First Lutheran family, probably one of the best decisions that we ever made. One story in particular comes to mind from my early days with my friend Eli Williams. Eli and I were not acting our best in our kindergarten class, this was a poor decision because our teacher was Miss Kim. Miss McGowan escorted us both to the bathroom that was located inside of her classroom. That was long before she was our youth director, and let's just say, that's where we had our first prayer meeting. <laughs> we joked over the years about being McGowanized, but the real truth is that Miss Kim has been one of our biggest cheerleaders for all of us. She was never there to judge, but always to remind us of God's grace. She knew each of us well enough to know when we were not reaching our fullest potential, and she loved us through each and every moment. I love you, Miss Kim. There have been some very memorable experiences here during my time in the youth. I'm certain that there was no other place on this earth than that school gymnasium that we slept in on our Connecticut mission trip. I learned that we had to wait for the other 500 people to fall asleep 
and then we could point the fan at our section of the gym in order to get a little breeze. All joking aside, the mission trips gave me opportunities to share God's love with people that were in unfortunate circumstances and work alongside the youth from all over the country. I hope that the congregation will continue supporting these trips in the future. There are a number of people that I would like to thank who positively impacted my youth experience. First and foremost, I would like to thank my mom and dad. Looking back at it, getting up for the early service every, uh, every Sunday was totally worth it. They always set the bar high for me, and I appreciate that because it has made me who I am today. I love you, Mom and Dad. My sister, Grelin. There's no way that another pair of siblings are more different than Grelin and I. But I sure am going to miss my little sister as I head off to college. I love you, Grelin. Also, I appreciate all of my grandparents for always seeing the best in me. I love you all. I would also like to thank Pastor John, Pastor Louise, Miss Michelle, Pastor James, and all my Sunday school teachers for always making me feel right at home when I was at the church. I would also like to mention Miss Kim again. She will remain that one person whispering in my ear, kindness, Gavin, kindness, once I go off to college. I would like to close with a Bible verse that truly speaks to me, and I hope it will to you. The verse is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 44. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use and persecute you. Even though it is an extremely difficult time, we must pray for those who wrong us and other people. We must love our enemies, and maybe, just maybe, our conduct will bring them closer to Christ. With the problems we are experiencing in our nation at the moment, maybe it's a good reminder for us all. One thing is for certain. I deeply appreciate the church and this congregation for essentially making me continue to strive at all times to be the best version of myself that I can be. Your support and prayers, I continue to the next phase are appreciated. Thank you and God's peace. Good morning. My name is Eli Williams and I'm a proud I'm proud to say I've been a lifelong member here at First Lutheran Church. Next week, I will graduate summa cum laude from North Stanley High School. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2 says, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. I think events of the recent months would definitely count as deep waters. So deep, in fact, that it's been hard to keep swimming. In March, COVID-19 rocked life as we know it. In a matter of days, our senior year was over. My final sports season cut short. The prom canceled along with our senior trip to New York and a graduation cruise with my friends. Everything that included multiple people in one place, gone, including our worship services on Sunday uh, night youth group here at church. It's one thing to skip a Sunday or two, but to know that there wasn't a service physically taking place at all was unsettling. But we've made do during the quarantine with our online services. And if I'm being totally honest here, filming my senior sermon is less stressful than standing before all of you in person. Just as we started to reopen our economy and get back to our new normal, we witnessed another tragic and avoidable death that has led to an epic time of unrest and protest across the country. Concerns over racial injustice have escalated, and many of the peaceful protests have turned violent. All this to say, it's been a lot to handle, not just for me with all my canceled events, but for our family, our community, our nation, and the world. But God is truly with us during these troubling times, and I've taken comfort in knowing that. I've grown closer to him every day. Many nights during quarantine, my family would take walks downtown. With hardly any cars on the road and a peacefully quiet downtown district, it was a time where I felt closer to God. Rounding the corner of 2nd and South Streets here to see our sanctuary reminded me that he was with me. Examples of his presence have been all around us. Life has been slowed down and people are being kinder to one another. He's been with these who have lost their jobs and worried about how to feed their families. He's been with others as they've been fortunate enough to sh share their financial blessings through Stanley Community Christian Ministries and Relief Funds. He's been with us as seniors and blessed us with people trying so hard to give us some memorable moments of graduation. God's given comfort to these families of men murdered for no apparent reason other than the color of their skin. He's with those who realize what lies ahead of us and is giving them the strength to step forward to help be the change. We know God's love now more than ever, and He's here. He's there. We just have to be still and know that He is with us, and He can get us through anything. I'm so blessed to have been raised in this church with almost 18 years of Lutheran faith, fellowship, and friends. 
If you ask most kids my age what day was meant for church, they would almost always say Sunday. For me, it was Wednesday as well. I began going to church on Wednesdays as a cherub at the age of three. Joe Lorch and Miss Cindy always made it so much fun, and each year brought more activities, more fun, and more understanding in our faith in God. Thanks to Miss Michelle, I even got to hang the hang of playing the handbells. From there, I moved up to Sunday night youth and experienced so much more. Ski trips, raking church members' yards, laser tag, the mission trip, and the Hornets games are memories I will take with me forever. However, I have Richard Allman to thank for one of my most memorable moments when our bus broke down in Cincinnati. It's not really a soccer sh shocker since it broke down every year on the mission trip. I'm still amazed at how he put it, put the bus in neutral and let it roll with all the traffic around him. I've made so many friends growing up here at First Lutheran. Some of you I only saw on Sundays and Wednesdays and others I went to school with. But through it all, it was always Gavin and I. At school, in sports, and right there in the church pew, you would find us together. It's a friendship that will last a lifetime no matter where life takes us. Although you know you're stuck with me for at least four more years. We can all agree that Miss Kim is the best director of Christian education ever, but she's been so much more than that to me. She's been my kindergarten teacher, my first grade teacher, and practically my aunt. Gavin and I were fortunate enough to have Miss Kim for a teacher, not just one year, but two. And as best friends usually do, we get into our trouble from time to time, and she'd pull us aside and give us stern talking to us. But truth be told, she probably, she probably went a little bit harder on us because of our relationship outside of the classroom. I think I cried every time, but it helped me make me who I am today. Thank you for everything you had done for me, Ms. Kim. I love you so much. What can I say about PJ that hasn't already been said? He's been such a wonderful influence in my life, no matter what you could say, and still can. Always count on him to have a smile on his face and talk to you about anything and nothing at all. Thank you, PJ, for showing us all how to be great people and great Lutherans. Pastor James, even though we didn't have a very long time together, I could always count on you to pull up a chair at the older kids' table and have a conversation with us. Thank you for being a great pastor and for giving me the coolest Christmas present a pastor could give me. And I can't wrap up the sermon without thanking my family for taking care of me in so many ways. I have two loving parents who I know are probably ready for me to pack my bags for college and hit the road. And then there's Jack, who has taught me so much more, so much growing up, even if it's not what it's, even if it was what not to do. I can honestly say you've been the best part of my quarantine, and I've loved these two months together. I love you all so much. I have a kind of wonderful, I have a kind and wonderful grandma, along with grandfathers and grannies who are watching over from above, and two really large families. But I'm also lucky to have my extended family right here at church. The McGowans, the Graves, the Oliveries. I could always and will be able to count on the back two rows in the sanctuary to be filled. I consider you my aunts and uncles. Thank you for being there and guiding me to be the young man I am today. So come August, I headed to, I'm headed to UNC Chapel Hill to major in studio art and ready to face whatever lies ahead of me. Because I know God is with me and each of you are as well. Go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God, and of course, the Tar Heels.
And with the whole church, let us now join together in confessing our faith through the, through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless all of our high school and college graduates in this very unusual and challenging year, especially those graduating from high schools and college who are members of First Lutheran Church, including Emily Almond, Catherine Carpenter, Cameron Helms, J.P. Lucas, Caroline Manus, Gavin Oliveri, Robert Shelton, Eli Williams, and those graduating from college, including Ben Grahowski, Rogers Brafford, and William Oak. For all those others who are graduating, we ask that you would bless them and fill them with hope for your future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, we have created divisions in our world that you will not own, and places of conflict, especially in our own country. Raise up leaders who work to develop systems of justice and lasting peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend, defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who hunger. Empower all whose voices go unheard and help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living and serving in this unusual time. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.